Hello and welcome to another RT2629 restoration video. This time we're taking the engine out the front of the bus to sort out a few little problems and silver the engine and paint the engine bay. Now this is going to be a bit of a learning curve for us because we've never taken an engine out of an RT before. If you've watched some of our earlier videos, you'll know we've done a whole load of route masters over the years and that's quite a straightforward process. But the RT being an older bus, the process of getting the engine out is a little bit more complicated. Our first job though is to get the water drained out of the radiator and get the radiator off. Yeah, we didn't spill it. Which way for us? It's nice and clean, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, pardon me. Uh, your tea. I'll tell you one. one. If you're wondering what the noise is, Mr. Jones is doing his wheels, look. Please, yeah. all that end. Wrong size. You done that yet? Hey. You done that yet? Not far off. <laughs> Right, with the bonnet off, now we can do the radiator. Just don't let it fall on me head, because it will go all the way down. Right, okay. We are doing that. The Back mints. Yeah. Yeah. And then grab on with something because it's heavy. Mr. Jones. And then that's right. You pull. No, you grab that. Just pull towards you. Um, go, go back towards you then. That's it. Put a little bump in there. Yeah. 
through reading the manual, we've worked out that we need to undo the rest of the starter cables and throttle rod underneath, and then we need to take the front shackle pins out and jack the frame of the bus up to leave the axle on the floor, which gives us a clearance underneath to get the sump over the top of the front axle. That's the theory. Indeed. Will that work out in practice? Keep watching, you'll find out. Oh, fucking awkward job this, isn't it? That's why you like doing it. Oh, this is Dave's favourite job. Is it? Yeah. It's not. Never believed it. <laughs> it's just as awkward as a route master. At least on a route master you can take the bloody wing off and do it. <laughs> right, well that's the exhaust manifold done. Four bolts. That haven't been done done for a long time. And I'm not as nimble as I used to be. So that took a lot longer and a lot more effort than what it should have taken. And he's only 22. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking good for my age, aren't I? Now to get off. You saw those babies there, yeah. Right, so we think that's everything disconnecting out on the top of the engine. We're now going to lift the bus up in the air to disconnect the starter motor and the prop shaft bolts. And then I think we are 90% there then to get this engine out. I've never got my head round the difference between a dynamo and an alternator. There's a question for you. What's the difference between an alternator that you get on a Rootmaster and a dynamo that are fitted to these RTs? They both charge the battery, but they do it in different ways. A dynamo, like an RTS, doesn't put out a constant voltage, whereas an alternator, like an RM has, gives out the same voltage pretty much all the time. I bought this set of useful Whitworth spanners a few years ago. Never needed them on a Rootmaster, but then off coming Andy on Tim's RT. Aren't they Tim? I think that's a new one, you know. We don't look very warm, do It's like new, there's no wear on it. Yeah, it's going up. Yeah? Yeah. The spring's staying where it is. Yeah. Okay, right, now something's taking the spring with it now. It's because we've got an angle on it. Yes. You need to do the other side, don't we? Yeah. We probably need to take the bow out the other side and lift it up together. I, I think, Tim, it yeah. probably needs to go higher than what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think there's enough clearance on on the sump. Let's go that much on the other side. Yeah. You see, what we're trying to do here is lower the chassis down enough to get the engine out. Now there's a big sump <coughs> that we've got to get over this frame that goes across. <coughs> I'm not sure we've lifted it high enough. I think it's probably got to go a little bit higher. But we'll find out when we jack up the other side. Okay, well done that man. That must be one of the special tools of the RT toolkit. What well, Dave's using here, adjustable. <laughs>
Don't you know, pump it up, pump it yeah, up, you got pump it up. <laughs> Bit too modern for me, that. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't even tell you who sings it. Says the man who likes McFly. <laughs> I've seen McFly in concert. Room on the third floor. Five colours in her hair. Right, pump it up, Mr. Jones. Pump it up. Don't you know? Pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. Who sings that song? Fuck That's the only lyrics I know. I can't tell you the rest of the song. See, I would take that up a notch higher than what the actual stand is on the near side. Bit more. That's it. Yeah. Let it down gently there. Don't forget, Alan doesn't do gently. Right. See what I mean? You don't do gently. Yeah, well, it's, it's either all or nothing. <laughs> I think the front wheel's off the floor on this side. Yeah, just. Now, you see, if this was a route master, we've had the engine out by now. Clearly, one of the improvements London Transport made when developing the Routemaster was access to the engine. And how quickly, on a Routemaster, you could whip that engine out and get a new one in. Yeah, but if it hadn't been for this bus, you wouldn't have had the Routemaster. Well, right, yeah. It's, an e it's evolution, not revolution. That's what old Carl used to say, isn't it? Is it? Colin Curtis, eh? Bill Durham. Evolution, not revolution. Yeah. Well, the route master certainly evolved, didn't it? Yeah. That's good. I'd say we got about two and a half, three inches clearance now. Right, and that is it for a day. It's nearly six o'clock, time to go home. Not bad afternoon's work, that. We didn't start this till lunchtime, so it's only taken us from about one o'clock to now to get to where we are. But we'll get the engine out tomorrow. We hope. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> It's day two of the RT engine removal and all we've got left to do is the prop shaft bolts and the front cross member here at the front. We've also got to make a lifting frame that will bolt across the top of the engine which my dad is working on that you'll see next. We're at the stage now where we've got to lift the engine out of the bus. In the early days when this was done at Alden Works they had a jig to lift the engine out of the bus picking up on four studs which sit inside the engine and come through here on picked up on pins. Unfortunately those jigs no longer exist so we've got to make a jig to be able to lift the engine out in one go. Hence why we've got this uh, bar that we've got here. We're going to mark this up to match up with the studs on the top of the engine. Drill through holes, drill through a hole sideways so that we can then connect the engine to the bar and using a lifting rig lift the engine safely out of the box. We've finished the lifting beam that we've been making to lift the engine with and this is with the shackle in the middle is off centre to take the weight of the engine because it's a lot heavier at the back than it is at the front so hopefully when we put this on it'll lift it more level than if it was positioned in the middle. Here we go, let's see if it fits. There we go. What we need to do is put the nuts down into these holes that are bigger at the top so we can get the socket in and uh, we're ready to lift. There we go, one lifting beam made and fitted for lifting an RT and Okay, if you bring that in then.
can do it now. Uh, I'm sorry. Two of the pole. Yep. And then it's pushing up in this. Uh, do you want to jump into the pole with that? I can do. Yeah. Push as well. Well, that's fantastic progress and it all worked out really well and uh, yeah, really pleased. We've got the engine out and it's sat over the other side of the workshop ready to go out and be steam cleaned tomorrow before we start taking bits and pieces apart. So there you have it. After lots of huffing and puffing and fabricating a new lifting arm, we got the engine out of the bus. And as Tim said, we're going to steam it off today, clean it up, it's going to be painted, the engine bay is going to be painted on the bus and then we'll put the engine back in. But whilst we've also got the engine out, we're also going to give it some TLC. As you can see, in various places around the block, it's very sweaty. And that's because this engine has probably been in this bus for well over 30 years and some of the gaskets have started to leak. That means it's leaking oil. So what we're going to do while we've got the engine out, we're going to replace a lot of the gaskets. We're going to take the heads off, replace the head gaskets. The head may need to go away for skimming, but we don't know that just yet. But also, as you can see, the gasket between the sump and the block, that's leaking oil. So we're going to take the sump off and replace the gasket. Also on this engine as well, and I don't know what this is called, but it's also got another gasket halfway along the block. Now on a Routemaster engine, on an AEC 590, the block is in one piece. The block here is in two sections. And this gasket here is leaking a lot of oil. You can see it's run down the side of the, the fuel pump here. So we're going to resolve all these issues that this engine has got. It's a good engine. It pulls well, there's no knocks. It's just these minor little oil leaks. And Tim's right. He says, we may as well strip this engine down, repair all those leaks before we put it back in the bus. Because then we know those gaskets are going to be good for another 30 or 40 years. But that engine strip down is going to have to wait for the next video. So from me, Tim, Alan and Tim's dad, Richard, thank you for watching. If you're still here, you must be enjoying this episode. So hit that like, give us a thumbs up. And if you're not done so already, please subscribe. The outtakes are on the way next. And until next time, bye bye. If you're wondering what the noise is, hey, carry on. Oh, oh, shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? I forgot that was what we had. That's my very expensive head torch. Where's the back? Of? Well, it's been broken. A bit. Oh, is it? Oh, it's still wet. Right, well, we think that's everything on top of the engine disconnected now. Now we're going to lift the bus up and undo bits and pieces down there. Undo bits and pieces, that sounded stupid, didn't it? Undo bits and pieces down there. Does that sound right? You're still in naughty bus mode, aren't you? <laughs> right, so we think there's everything disconnected on the top of the engine. We're going to lift the bus up in the air now and disconnect the starter motor and what else was it, Tim? Prop shaft bolts. You'll have to take it off for a minute, don't you? Just wait, it. It's day two of the RT engine removal and. <laughs> Well, we're at the stage now where we've got to lift the engine out of the... <laughs> so, there you go. After lots of huffing and putting... Putting? Huffing and putting. Not huffing and puffing, we do huffing and putting round here. As in golf. <laughs> <laughs>